it says find the exact value and then they give you this mess. Right, so this is what we need to do, okay? The easiest way to approach it is to think of this guy in here, right? To think of him as an angle, right? I know it's really just a number, but if we think of him as an angle, that's useful to us. Let's call him theta, okay? So I'm gonna introduce this variable. Actually, it's not a variable, it's a constant. Okay, so if that's sine inverse of a fifth, okay? Because a fifth is within the domain of sine inverse, it's all okay, right? I can just take sine of both sides. That works. So this line here, this gives me a triangle. This gives me a triangle. Now the reason why a triangle is useful is because it will give me other trig ratios to do with theta, not just sine, okay? So if I put theta over here, what does the one fifth tell me? What can I label on there? Sine is opposite and hypotenuse, isn't it? So I've got one over five, which from Pythagoras tells you the other side is? Square root of 24. Five squared minus one squared. Okay. okay, so I've got this set up, that's great. How am I going to use it? If this is theta, right, then this is two theta up here. It's just double angle. Double angle. I know what double angle is, that's two sine cos. Okay, now you can see why the triangle is helpful, right? I already know what sine is because I defined it. I introduced theta in the first place. So it's a fifth. But what's cos? Well, now I need to appeal to this triangle that I've built, right? Cos is adjacent on hypotenuse. Sorry, yeah, that's right. Okay. Now I just need to tidy up. Um, I might as well, that square root of 24, I can simplify that, can't I? What would I make that? Take out a factor of four, that's two root six, I think. So you're gonna get four root six on 25 and you're home. Okay.